What's going on, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I am your host, Justin Martindale. And oh, did you hear that? Summer is just dwindling away. And while you guys are enjoying your Labor Day weekend, which I hope you guys had a wonderful Labor Day weekend, myself and one of my producers, Lee Nason, are here to give you the podcast that you need to wrap up the perfect summer 2024 that we had here. It was a good summer, right, Lee? I had a great time. It was fun. Yeah. It was uh, now, right now, of course, because we're in September is when it starts to get like 111 hot, <laughs> yeah. melting. Yeah, this week it's going to be 100 all week. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's uncomfortable. It's, yeah, it's a lot. But we are already already having those little sprinklings of fall. It's a little bit of a spook in the air, which I'm kind of here for. Um, I found out over the weekend, my Labor Day uh, weekend was, uh, I, I found out I'm a, I'm a good bowler. I went bowling. You don't go bowling a lot? Don't go bowling a lot. I actually went to Lucky Strike in Hollywood. Okay. Really nice. You had a good time? Yeah, I won. Really? I won twice. All right. Yeah. How many I, teams did were you, did you play? I just did two rounds. Else? I won both of them. Okay. And I bowled like a one thirty something. Wow. I know. I don't know if that's. I think that's okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think. I, like, I don't know either. Yeah. <laughs> I think what three. But with three other gays, I kicked ass. <laughs> I think three hundred is the max. Yeah. So. That's not bad. You know what? For never doing it and without the like little baby guards, <laughs> done. It was great. Um. Really, really fun uh, weekend, very relaxing. I will also be in Dallas this weekend, Friday and Saturday at the Big Laugh Comedy Club in Fort Worth, Texas. So get your tickets now. Two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. Um, but yeah, overall, really nice, relaxing weekend. Also caught up with some great television, uh, some great documentaries. If you have not watched Chimp Crazy, which was recommended by my friend, John Hill last week, get into it. It's insane. There's three episodes out now. I think the new episodes come out every Friday. It's about this woman named Tanya. And uh, she has chimpanzees. And it's kind of crazy. It's the, it's the um, same director as Tiger King. And it goes from like what's going on to actually this is kind of sad because I feel like with tigers in cages, you're like, oh, they're just like, you know, big cats laying around and, you know, still sad. But like chimps are like, ugh, they're like people. So they're just like in these cages and it's, I'm not going to give too much away, but there is a lot of like lying and betrayal and murder. Is murder? <laughs> I'm not going to give too much away. Okay. But yes, there is like, there's some stories of chimp owners of the past. And it's just really interesting. And the first three are out. I don't know how many are in the series, but it is, I don't know how it's going to end. I have no idea. Like it could end this way or it could just totally... Can you give us a little bit of the setup? Like, what? Where is it based? Is are there it's like? It's based in Missouri. Okay. Um, and, and this woman. And are they like chimp refugees, or like like refuges? Not well, refugees. Missouri is the only state that can like really allow exotic animals to be owned by civilians. Okay. Um, like you can just go buy a, you know. Peacock or a, <laughs> it's, go, it's go get a chimpanzee. Lawless in Missouri. Yeah. Okay. So you can have it and then call it like a foundation or whatever. And it's like, mm, you're just collecting exotic animals. Wow. So it's just kind of. Um, and the, there's mayhem and conflict within that. Chim mayhem, conflict, uh, lies, deceit, terrible wigs, <laughs> but also terribly amazing because they're so terrible. I mean, Tanya, she has a good heart. That's all I'm going to say. She has a great heart, but it's also like, girl, <laughs> it's, 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 it, it is a lot. And also, um, there's a series on Netflix called The Worst Ex Ever. If you haven't seen that, a new episode dropped. I didn't know this was a series as well. But watch the newest installment. It's called Dance or called Dating the Devil, I believe. 
And it's about this guy in Portland who, yeah, worst ex ever. This guy in Portland who moved to Vegas and just goes insane with these three women. It was the craziest thing. And I'm not like a big true crime person, but I did watch this over the weekend and was like, damn, maybe I am a true a true crime person. I don't know. Um, very, very good. And then also, I have to see the movie Deliverance with Glenn Close and Monique. If you haven't seen the clip that's going all over the internet, it is a Lee Daniels movie. Um, and it is uh, really something else. I had no idea what this movie was about. And then they're like, oh, it's a horror film. It's a Lee Daniels horror film. And there is a scene that's all over the internet where it's Glenn Close. She has black pupils. She has sharp teeth. And she says something that I never thought Glenn Close would say in a movie. I'm not even going to repeat it, but just look it up. Stuff will come up. You'll but see it. It'll be in the feed. Have you seen it? You know what I'm I talking saw, about? Yeah, I saw it in my feed this morning. <laughs> I didn't know what it was, though. I was confused. Yeah, so it's like this horror film that I'm kind of like, all right, I'll give it a go. I I can't wait to get into horror movie season. I, I still haven't seen Long Legs, which I got to watch. I loved it. Um, I, I, I want to really see The Watchers it. with Dakota Fanning. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely, like, ready to go with the spooky season. But, Great. Um, yes... Our summer is dwindling away. Hopefully, you had a great one. The kids are back in school. Um, and you guys are ready for fall. And I'm just going to count down some of my favorite moments from the summer of 2024. I mean, first off, I have to give it to the Olympics. The Olympics were fantastic. I loved them. They were controversial. They were um, inspiring. There were new records. There were... For the first time in X years, those kind of moments. And it was just really, really awesome to see Team USA snag the most gold medals at the 2024 Paris Olympics. Most of those golds won by women. So cheers to the ladies. I mean, we had, of course, Simone Biles and the girls from the United States gymnastics team. We had the the, the women's soccer team. Um, we had women swimming, uh, we had men's basketball, uh, but I'm like, also like men's basketball was kind of like, like we knew, right? They fought it out. I think the last game came down, came a little down to the wire. I think it was really? like one shot. Yeah. I would just think that like the men's basketball team would just decimate everybody. I didn't know, honestly, I didn't know that like other countries played basketball. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is just like our thing. I didn't know. But yeah. It was close. 98 to 87. 98, 87 for the U.S. men's fifth consecutive gold medal. So good for them. That must be nice. Could you imagine just being like, oh yeah, here's my NBA cha championship and I also won the Olympics. Uh, men's track and field, Noah Lyles is now officially the fastest man in the world by... 0 0.005 seconds. I actually watched this race. It was fantastic. He beat Jamaica's Kishane Thompson by an eyelash in which was the fastest 100 meters final in history. Um, which, God, I, these guys, watching them run, and I'm going to say, like, all around, any event, any running event, any swimming event, you, you're just watching it and you're like, oh, okay. But then you don't realize, like, well, how fast they are. Their legs just move so fast. Yeah, like, they're, they move so fast that it makes them not look that fast. Yeah, well, and they're Kind of like when fast. I run. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I look like when I run. I'm just like, I'm really, really fast. It just doesn't look like it. <laughs> so I totally get what Noah Lyles is all about. But overall, <laughs> fantastic. You get it. Um, let's see. We had women's rugby, which was... Great. Alex Cedric, she helped the U.S. to a bronze medal on the very last second of the play. The, the U.S. trailed Australia 12-7, and then the last second, boom, kick, goal, bronze. Awesome. Uh, let's see. And then, you know, this, this guy, men's gymnastics. Men's gymnastics, it was the first time ever. I watched this whole match. I was obsessed with it. They were eating dirt so bad. Like, I want to say, now, don't come for me, but I feel like they were, like, 
eighth place or sixth place in the beginning of the finals. And these guys just kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going, killing it every every uh, round. And the bell of the ball, Stephen Nederus, Nederosic or Nederosic, I can't. I, I we know your guess. The is kid with the that. glasses, yes, <laughs> yes, um, had one event, one event, which was the pommel horse, which I don't understand why this is a thing. <laughs> No one, I don't know anybody who's like, oh, I can't go out tonight. I have to palm a horse. Like, you know what I mean? It's like. Well, this guy does. He, it's the one thing he is fantastic at and he nailed it. It was such a good finish for the men's uh, competition. Uh, yeah, he waited two hours to actually compete for the whole event to be done with. So this is actually the event. I mean. That takes some strength. And we're, we're watching him pommel horse. Right I would now be, for the my legs would be bruised <laughs> and broken. <laughs> my kneecap would snap off my leg. This incredible. This, uh, just, uh, so good. He knows he nails it. He screams, yes, victory, US, yes. Great Absolutely moment. fantastic. Um, and this is the first time the US has ever rec has received a medal since 2008. So they got bronze, they killed it. And also he can't see. <laughs> yeah, he takes off his glasses. He yeah, gets he up. has like he has some sort of a um a vision impairment where he needs these like big glasses. And everyone was calling him Clark Kent of the Summer Olympics because he took his glasses off, became Superman. It was just really, really cool. And also, uh, he is the first official contestant on Dancing with the Stars this season, which the new season will be announced Wednesday, uh, September 4th. Oh, that's the day this comes out. But if you want to sabotage this kid, break his glasses. They're like, try doing an Argentinian samba now, crack. <laughs> like, no! <laughs> like, his glasses breaking is his kryptonite. Um, <laughs> we have the women swimming. Katie Ledecky, she won the 800-meter freestyle yet again. I love it when it says yet again. Like, they've done it, and they're like, all right, I'll win another one. Um, but it was just great overall. I I, I felt, I thought the opening ceremony was fantastic. Uh, one of my favorite highlights from the opening ceremonies was seeing Celine Dion uh, come out of the hiding of just rehabilitated and ready to go. She has just announced that she's doing a Vegas residency. She's coming back to Vegas um, for All Worlds. And uh, it was just so inspiring because I watched that documentary on a plane and I was bawling. Um, I loved Celine. I loved the... You know what? I, I loved the Marie Antoinette like heavy metal performance. Yeah. But of course, we can't have anything fun without controversy. So, of course, the opening ceremony was controversial because they depicted the Feast of Bacchus and people were like, there's drag queens, they're going to eat our children. And it's like, oh my God. So everyone got hell-bent on that and then it kind of just went away. How about that? And then um, we also had the uh, female boxer who everyone were was misgendering her, Elon Musk, J.K. Rowling, uh, who else was part of that? Oh, the uh, the whole right wing, the Every trifecta of of garbage people. Yes. Um. Yeah, and they were uh, uh Jake Paul. All these people were like, "Well, I guess we're just letting men fight other women." And it's like the worst. I mean, it was awful. And this woman fucking sucked it up and won the gold. And now she's suing all of them. And I say, go for it. Um. Also, uh, Jordan from the uh the women's gymnastics team with Simone Biles and all the other girls, she had her medal taken away, which I don't know what happened with that. They It was just kind of like, they were like, oh, we're going to take her medal away. I don't know if it actually was taken away, but it was just some sort of weird, unnecessary incident. They were, I, I have no idea. Yeah, Jordan Childs, she won, she, wait, the CS won't reconsider the case that took away her her bronze medal. This has kind of been swept under the rug, I feel like. She's kind of clearly, I'm sure, upset, and she's kind of laid low 
on this. However, Dancing with the Stars, she could get a mirror ball trophy <laughs> if they call if they call her up. Um, so yeah, she. Huh? Do you want to read some of this? Yeah, so the Court of Arbitration for Sport, uh, the CAS, said it won't reconsider its ruling that led to Olympic officials asking Jordan Childs to return the bronze medal she was awarded. Um, despite new video evidence provided by the USA Gymnastics, the court told USA Gymnastics that its rules didn't allow for final decisions to be reconsidered, even if conclusive new evidence is presented. But nobody knows what this evidence is. We're deeply disappointed by the notification and will continue to pursue every possible avenue and appeal process, including to the Swiss Federal Tribunal to ensure the just scoring placement and medal award for Jordan. So... Well, that's too bad. It sucks. Yeah. And like it... I don't know like what it was. I have no idea. Let's see. Um... She filed an inquiry over Charles' score, arguing that judges had incorrectly valued the difficulty of the gymna gymnast routine. Judges at the event upheld the inquiry and granted Charles an additional tenth of a point, moving her score to 13.766. That higher score leapfrogged her over Barbosa, um, who is the Romanian gymnast. Um, Afterward, oh, the Romanian gymnast. Yeah, the Romanian Olympic officials protested the judge's decision, alleging that the inquiry had come too late and then agreed to knock her score down. So it was a technicality. Yeah, they said her her uh, floor routine was not as difficult as it was supposed to be. As it was originally scored. Yeah. That's pretty whack. Yeah. Well... And of course I'm thinking... Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I still love Jordan. I love that whole team. I felt like I like knew all of them. Like all the athletes, I was like, you guys are so much fun. I want to hang out. But then I got scared when they talked. <laughs> well, they're young girls. Well, no, they're like, no, no, all of them. Like all oh. like gym, like, their bodies are sick. All Guys, girls, all of them. Yeah. The diving, synchronized diving, they're all just tiny, just like meat. <laughs> they're tiny meat. Yeah. They're just huge legs, arms, abs, all of it. And then and then you talk to them and they're like, oh, it's just really excited. And you're like, wow, it's weird. <laughs> but no, I loved, I loved Team USA. It was a great Olympics overall. Let me know what your favorite uh, events were. Mine, definitely synchronized diving. One of my favorites. Um, and they swam in the sand, but I didn't watch because I don't. I didn't want to see that. <laughs> I watched some of it. I watched them diving in for the for the triathlon. It was <sighs> I guess a lot of people got sick. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I was supposed to go to the beach this weekend and I said no. <laughs> because there's sewage in all of the beaches in LA. Especially now at the end of the summer. And like, oh my God. I'm gonna tell this story real quick. Yeah. So we went out to dinner last night after I won bowling. We go to Koi <laughs> on La Cienega. And we made friends with our waitress, who was very, very sweet. And she was telling us, she's like, oh, yeah, I went to the beach this weekend. And I was like, oh, you did with all the sewage? Which one did she go to? And she's like, oh, you know, like Santa Monica. And I'm like, under the Ferris wheel? Yeah. So she goes, "I." it kind of smelled a little bit. And I'm like, yeah, because there's like, sewage because that high tide goes in to the sewage and and one of our friends was like well did you see like runoff going into the water and she's like no but can i ask you guys a question and i'm like oh no what happened she says well i took a photo shoot and i i want to now that you're talking about this is the water around me sewage she pulls this picture up and it is all just like white foam no and I'm like, yeah, that's sewage. Oh. You're, and she's like, oh my God, I'm swimming in sewage. And I go, you're swimming in sewage, but like, it looks great. <laughs> like, it's like a frothy, like, just like, it looked like a foam party, but like at the beach. It's a frothy moment. Frothy moment. Yeah. <laughs> Fri frothy moment with tiny meat. Um, <laughs> that's literally, but. That's so gross. I was like, this secret stays with us. I'm not going to go on my podcast and talk about it. <laughs> you are totally fine. So uh, we're rooting for you, girl. So hang in there. Um, now, let's get back into some summer, some summer fun. 
This summer was all about the rat boy summer. Uh, a lot of people were like, what is a rat boy? I discussed it uh, earlier this season. Rat boy is pretty much uh, just guys who look like hot rodents. Um, Timothy Chalamet, um, for one, is, I think, the epitome of rat boy. The term rat boy is a partial product of this summer's horniest film, The Challengers, which if you didn't see it this summer, where are you? Watch it now. It's streaming. It's fantastic, which stars Mike Feist um, and Ratatouille superfan Josh O'Connor, who is, I think, the breakout rat boy of the film. Um, let's see. We also have some other rat boys, along with Timothy Chalamet, Barry Keown, uh, Kieran Culkin, Matt Healy, The term has been pushed more and more mainstream by women online, with many of them expressing a desire for a partner with hot rodent qualities. I think it's fine to have a hot rodent quality. If you're into that, just don't smell like cheese. Anywhere. Anywhere. And I mean, Flamunda. Okay? Um... Pretty much a hot rodent man is essentially a way of describing a skinny, lanky, unconventionally attractive dude who does not embody stereotypical macho-like attributes. He has more of a pointed, angular face structure that is almost rat or mouse-like. He rocks messy hair. He sports vintage clothing. And to borrow the internet's phrasing is so wan as to appear one cigarette away from death. Okay. So just dirty, straight twink. It's giving 90s grunge. 90s grunge heroin chic. Yes. This is the man who smells... Wait, this is what it says. This is the man who always smells like Santal 33, musky tobacco, and stale coffee. Mmm. So... Let's get that you, cologne going. Big, <laughs> but, okay, so we're going from Rat Boy Summer to... I mean, I don't know what I would be. What if I'm? I don't think I'm. I'm not Rat Boy, well, at all. Well, I think we we talked about this uh, on another episode, um, and uh, we talked. I think we said giraffe was the animal we landed on for you. Giraffe. Yeah, I would say giraffe or like Pegasus, a Pegasus Prince fall, <laughs> just a winged horse with a mane. <sighs> Yes, just majestic, mythological. Did I see a Pegasus or was that just Justin? It was me. Running fast, but not. Through the sky. Legs mm. are so fast. Mm-hmm. Well, we went from Rat Boy Summer to Ladies, You're Not Alone. We had Brat Girl. And a Brat Girl we discussed was just, you know, that girl who likes to just barrel through a... 7-Eleven, open the soda case, open a beer, chug it in the 7-Eleven, throw it, puke in the trash can, get back to her friends who are down the street going into Barney's Beanery. Like that kind of a brat girl. And I will have to say, it is the, officially the end of Brat Girl Summer because Charlie XCX, who originated the term Brat Girl Summer after her uh, album release, which is so much fun, I can't get enough of it. She, it was called Brat. She has said on X, goodbye forever, Brat Summer. And I kind of love that. I kind of, she's like, okay, it's over, guys. It's done. Um, and it was everywhere. If you were anywhere this summer, you heard Apple. You heard 365. You heard her uh, duet with Billie Eilish. Do you wonder what the color of my underwear? Yes. Yeah, that was good. Great. Um, I loved the album. I thought it was so, so much fun. TikTok, she was everywhere. Everyone's doing the dance. Um, let's see. Following Brat's success, Rolling Stone has declared that the world had finally caught up with the singer Brat, which dropped on June 7th of this year, dominated the cultural conversation thanks to lyrics and songs von Dutch, 360, such as I'm Everywhere, I'm So Julia. Charlie continued growing the album's impact with massive remixes of some of the LP songs, including the Girl So Confusing remix with Lord and Billie Eilish on their song called Guess. 
and an expanded version of the album called Brat, and it's the same, but there's three more songs, so it's not. <laughs> <laughs> the album also spawned a TikTok dance challenge, which went everywhere. So good for her. And the LP even had a political crossover with Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign, played into Charlie XCX's Brat Summer aesthetic by changing their X header to the chartreuse aesthetic of the British singer's album after she was announced as the Democratic presidential nominee. So, and Charlie also gave her consent saying, Kamala is brat. Kamala is brat. Uh, to be on the right side of democracy, the right side of women's rights is hugely important to me. Um, so she's happy to help prevent democracy from falling forever. Hey, preventing democracy from falling forever is so brat. <laughs> um, but yes, it is over and we need to, we need, I don't know, what are we going to get? Well, Pegasus <laughs> fall. Was, yeah, Pegasus fall. Yeah, I'm kind of here for it. Fall. Not mad. <laughs> but you know who else had a really, really great brat, uh, brat girl summer is America's possum princess, Gypsy Rose. Uh, she announced earlier this summer that she was, in fact, pregnant, which I'm a little devastated. Not that she's pregnant, but... <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm devastated that... I for sure thought that she was going to be on Dancing with the Stars. I called it. I was like, she's going to do it. And then she had to ruin it and go get knocked up with 10 possums in her pouch. <laughs> so she said um, that she is pregnant after all. Um, she went kayaking with her boyfriend. Here's a photo of her showing off her body, which, I mean, kayaking with Ken. So here she is. She's rocking her new blonde. She enjoyed... Uh, and her new nose. Her new nose. I'm sure she's going to start a uh, podcast soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I'm I'm good for her. She, she had a great summer. And uh, I forgot to mention that not only is the gymnast uh, going to be on Dancing with the Stars. By the way, this is not a plug for Dancing with the Stars. It's always just like a big kick. I always like to see who they put on this show. I don't even watch Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> I just like who's on it. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, they did announce that Anna Delvey might be on Dancing with the Stars too. If she has not already confirmed it. Anna Delvey is going to be on Dancing with the Stars. She's going to be doing all of her dances with an ankle bracelet. Why? <laughs> because she's poor. I, which I'm kind of like, I think Dancing with the Stars is like the perfect show to award and reward bad behavior. <laughs> like, if, if you're scandalous or in the news or whatever, get on Dancing with the Stars, you're going to be fine. Um, but uh, yes, so Brat Girl Summer is over. We've got Gypsy Rose just baking in the sun and baking a baby. We also had over the summer the big ordeal with the security guard at Cannes. Do you remember this? Where the Cannes Film Festival was happening and there was this like security guard who was just like tackling everybody and pissing everybody off. Well, we finally found out, I think, in this article what happened because it was all over the headlines, this woman was interacting with all these celebrities and everybody just looked pissed off at this woman. And every day, there was always another incident with another celebrity where it looked like they were screaming. Uh, people who were like professional lip readers were like posting what was being said, all that kind of stuff. So I think Kelly Rowland was the first one from Destiny's Child to have the interaction with the security guard. Uh, she attended the Marcelo Mio movie premiere and videos circulated on social media showed two security guards ushering up uh, the Palais des Festival staircase. Uh, the aforementioned female guard was one of the red carpet ushers with Roland and put her hand up behind the singer's back as she walked up the staircase while turning around and waving to fans. While the second security member appeared to walk away, a visibly frustrated Roland turned around and said something to the female lifeguard who continued to leave her arm up. There were other women that attended that carpet who did not quite look like me and they didn't get scolded or pushed off or told to get off. I stood my ground and she felt like she had to stand hers. She told the Associated Press after that now viral red carpet moment, but I stood my ground. Why? Because Kelly Rowland is a survivor. She ain't gonna give up. <laughs> um, 
Now, that was not the only interaction with this same security guard. We had a K-pop star named Yuna. She got it as well. Uh, the musician had a similar experience with the security guard. The guard had her arm out in front of Yuna while she was waving at her fans. The singer looked down at the guard's arm before continuing her ascent up the stairs. Uh, we also had Miss Europe 2023, Sawa uh, Pontijuska. <laughs> Sawa Pontijuska. Sure. Pontijuska. She shared a video of her interaction with the security guard uh, while at the Marcelo Mio premiere. Pontijuska, which sounds like a groundhog. She's that really sees its shadow. Her. She's really fighting it out there. Pontijuska can be seen posing for photos at the top of the stairs as the same female security guard attempted to drag the model inside. <laughs> Not drag the model inside. So, yes, we don't know what happened with the security guard, if she's still securitying. Um, but, uh, yeah, it definitely was something to watch. Oh, and there was also uh, another former Miss Dominican Republic uh, wearing a uh, Giannina Azar gown that featured a 15-foot train adorned with a portrait of Jesus Christ. And now as she ascended the same staircase, uh, Tavares attempted to lay out the dresses train for her photos. Tavares attempted to pose for photos. She asked the ushers to step back. And the same female security guard stepped up behind the actress with her arm up. Eventually, the female security guard put her arm down, uh, around her shoulders to bring her into the theater to Vera shove the guard per video footage of the moment. Yeah, like, I don't understand what... I mean, if they're at a premiere, why are they not allowed to, like, wave? I don't understand if it's, like, an etiquette thing or, like... What I heard at the time was that you had to have a certain pass to be take to have photos taken on the stairs. Um, and that probably wasn't properly uh, explained to everybody attending. So everybody attending expected to have their picture, re red carpet their moment. moment. Yeah, and but you actually had to be like a certain type of attendee to stop and have your picture taken. Not a former Miss Dominican Republic or? I guess she didn't make the cut. Wow, I know. That makes sense. I get that. Well, we have gone from the Cannes Film Festival to right now we are in the Venice Film Festival. So all of the uh, film, the films coming out, I guess, at the end of, or like coming out later this fall, going into the holidays to compete for award season are all coming out. Yeah, the big one was um, the SNL movie. The SNL movie? Yeah, so they made an SNL movie that... Uh, basically takes it it's like a one day in, in thinking real time it takes it like from uh from rehearsal to air of the first ever episode of snl oh with chevy chase and all them yeah so it, it's all cast and it's all kind of period oh that's piece. cool yeah and i that was uh a big well, well received uh film that's from, crazy from that festival. they have all that footage no it's it's cast it's it's all acted. It's it's oh, it's actors playing them like it's their first week of the show ever. Yes, cool. Yes, and it's okay. all it like leads up to airtime the way I understood it, but I could be wrong. But is the last line of the film live from New York at Saturday night? Most likely, I would guess so. Didn't see that one coming, <laughs> but good for them. <laughs> but uh, the the thing that I love about the Venice Film Festival is the ridiculous lengths of standing ovations. Yeah. Like the film will end and you'll always see something from like, you know, Hollywood Reporter or, or whatever these like uh, accounts on Instagram that'll be like, Nicole Kidman standing, shaking like a chihuahua for 17 minutes during an applause after her film. You know, yes. and you just see them and everyone's just like, I would never, <laughs> I would never. And it makes me laugh because this is just ass kissing at its finest. No one, I saw Madam Webb. I do not believe there was a nine minute applause for Madam Webb. At the Fest Film Festival. I can't, like, what if there's just a movie so bad and everyone's just like, mmm, mmm. 
Oh, we're still going? Okay. We're not done yet? Okay. I'm pissing my pants. Like, can we go get another Deadpool popcorn bucket? Um, but yeah, so good for them. The Venice Film Festival. Maybe that security guard's not there body slamming Kelly Rowland on the stairs. Oh, my bad. The SNL one was from Telluride, which is also happening. Which one? Tell the Telluride Festival. Oh, Telluride. Yeah. Wrong festival, Lee. Wrong festival. I know. I'm not up on. I you gotta I'm... get in with the right festivals. <laughs> what are they showing at Venice? <laughs> exactly. Nicole Kidman and Are Those Birds, <laughs> a new film uh, by Tilda Swinton and <laughs> Talk to a Girl. <laughs> One of my favorite artists, and yours as well, is Chapel Run. She was all over the breakout star of the summer. Um, we have talked about her all summer long. I mean, what a year for female empowerment. I loved Sabrina Carpenter coming in, starting it all off with Espresso. She's got a new single out called Taste with uh, Jenna Ortega, who's in uh, the Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice movie. And they give a shout out and a nod to Death Becomes Her, uh, Ginger Snaps, I'm trying to think, um, um, Kill Bill, all of these like iconic scenes from these, this genre of like goth horror action. Uh, and I just loved it. I love it. It's a great video. If you haven't watched it, just take a little moment to see it. But uh, Sabrina... Charlie, Chapel, in that order. Thought it was great. Yeah, it all started at like government at Governor's Ball mm -hmm. this summer yeah. with their huge breakout performances. Yeah. And then they and then and then Chapel Roan went on to have like the biggest performance ever yep. at Lollapalooza. And then um at what was the last festival there? It was so she just had an incredible summer. I mean, the crazy thing about it was like the drone footage that you would see of just like her on stage and just like thousands and thousands of people just like jamming out, hot to go. Did I call it as one of the songs of the summer? Sure did. Um, and yeah, breaking attendance records for these festivals. Hold on. I actually have the Spotify's global top five songs of the summer based on streams, listens, plays, all of that. So. This is in no particular order. We have Birds of a Feather by Billie Eilish. We have Hot to Go by Chapel Roan. We have Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar. We have Espresso by Sabrina Carpenter. And we have A Bar Song, Tipsy by Shabuzi. So those are the top five songs of the summer. Top five songs of the summer. And I, I'm, it makes sense. If you were on social media, those were always the songs that were used in the backgrounds, right? Absolutely. I think so. But I'm really excited about Chapel Roan. Of course, last week, she made a statement saying like, hey, just kind of leave me alone. I don't know you shit. <laughs> and we said, yes, she does not. She does not owe you shit. I was just kind of a little like, oh, man, it just kind of sucks that she has to like put this out there because it looks like, just leave me alone, I'm a person, you know. But that's where we're at. That's how an artist gets through to their audience, gets through their fans now. People came after me. They were like, leave her alone. She's doing the best she can. I'm like, hey, I'm a huge Chapel Roan fan. Love her. Love her. I just want to make sure she's okay. And also, she's not wrong. It's very like, that's where we're at. Poor BB Rex is just getting phones thrown at her every day. And yeah, you have to like kind of tell everyone, relax, stop being crazy. Just let me do my thing. And also like, don't run up to me and be like, hey, remember that time when in high school? And you know, just like let her do her thing. Um, but yeah, so she is killing it. However, she is getting into a little bit of hot water. Uh, over the weekend, she announced that she will be performing at the VMAs, uh, the MTV uh, Video Music Awards this year. And unfortunately, we'll have to cancel some of her dates to do the VMAs. And people were like, oh, but, you know, she wants to be left alone, but is, is doing this, like, mainstream, you know, show. I'm like, shut up. She has been putting herself out there for 10 years. As an artist, you know how important the VMAs are. The VMAs, I mean, I'm sure they're, I don't know, I can't tell you the last time I saw the VMAs, but, like, growing up, the VMAs were, like, like chef's kiss to perform at the VMAs. Uh, 
Madonna, Britney, Christina, that moment happened. You know, there's, um, I remember with Nicki Minaj, like levitating, um, Lady Gaga, the meat dress. There's so many iconic moments from the MTV Video Music Awards. And I'm pretty sure, I'm going to call it, Chapel's performance is going to be just as amazing as those past. I think she's going to, she's going to do something that's going to have us all talking about it in a couple weeks. Mark my words. Mark my words. It's going to be a feminine nominon. <laughs> um, so yes, I loved Chapel and I'm very, very excited for her. Well, she's such a great artist. That she's she, cool. She could really bring something cool to that stage. And like you said, there been, there's been so many iconic performances there. I so know. I, I think she she deserves her chance to step Did in. Did you there. have a favorite um, summer anthem? Um, I mean, I liked, I liked Hot to Go. I liked all that stuff that was kind of dancing around that. I Do you I'm sing not, in your car, Lee? Um, not really. Mm. I, I listen to podcasts. I'm boring. I'm like, I, I I don't really listen to pop music on my own. I know, but you're very, like, opinionated. It's good. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I like Pink Pony Club. I think that has a good melody God, to it. Oh, that's such a good one. <laughs> go, go, bitch. Keep going. Yeah. yeah I wish I had some dollars to throw at you right now. <laughs> that's a fun one. Isn't that great? And it's yeah. also like, West Hollywood. And I'm like, we live here. <laughs> <laughs> it's also, like, very, like, Jumbo's Clown Room. Like, you're just like, oh, the Pink Pony Club. Yeah. It's like... It's a great video, too. They actually played the video at the bowling alley, and I had no idea there was a video for it because nobody, what, no yeah, one does no. videos anymore. Yeah, right. Or maybe they do, and I just don't see them. But it was people, nice. I was like, oh, the people video. watch them on YouTube. Mm -hmm. you, you, YouTube still, you know, it's still kind of worth putting out a music video because you do get a lot of views on YouTube. And if you want to listen to the song, actually, YouTube is. I think even above Spotify when it comes to people listening to music. Because think about it when you're at home, you, you have YouTube on your TV, you search the song you want to play, and you can set up playlists. Okay. You, yes. You know what's really, really fun too, which I've discovered? If you go to YouTube and you type in, um, yeah, like Summer Songs 2024, Summer Song or Summer Videos 2024, like a playlist will pop up. Yeah. There is a genre of music that I have just discovered, and I'm sure I'm late to the game. I'm sure, I'm sure, like, people are like, yeah, duh. Well, it just got to me, okay? <laughs> bossa Nova modern music. Is it Bossa Nova remixes? Yes. Yeah. But, but like, current songs and songs of the past. It's great. It's so much fun. I'll be like... I'll, I'll be, I was like watering my plants and like cleaning on Saturday and just had that plane in the living room. I was like, ah, oh, God, am I at the coolest cafe ever? <laughs> yeah, it, it's really fun to listen to like read, read, and read. It, uh, we were talking about with your guests, the uh, the classical versions. Like that, the Bridgerton songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, like the uh, um, uh, Vitamin String Quartet. Yeah. Which is, yeah. And I feel like a lot of people are doing that now with like weddings. Yeah. Like Walking down to instrumental versions of songs. Yep. I mean, but the recommendation is this: these bossa nova, it, these bossa nova. Covers. Bossa novas can get it. All right. It's great. It's just like it's it's just like it's very pool chill, mm -hmm. easy. Oh, I highly recommend it. I like a big band vibe. Mm -hmm. Like like with swing and and horns and mm -hmm. and it's just and, like uh. It's a sixties. It's a sixties uh, house yes. party in the in the Hollywood Hills. It, yes, <laughs> it's so good. Um, well, we're gonna go from that breath of fresh air <laughs> to a nice spit on that thing with Hawk to a girl, <laughs> just blessing us with the viral sensation. I think. Unfortunately, of the summer, uh, if we don't know who Hawk to a girl is, keep it that way. <laughs> Just run and don't look back. Her name is Haley Welch. Uh, she made a big announcement on social media today about launching a project after skyrocketing to fame. She went on X and Instagram to say that she is doing her, quote, lifelong dream. It's finally come true. Uh, after her viral sensation, which still I'm perplexed as of this day, like, 
Was she, she was drunk outside, yeah, she, and someone was like, she was like drunk outside a bar in Nashville. Yeah, and somebody which tracks. and somebody asked, um, "How do you keep a man interested?" How do you keep a man interested? Yeah. To which she said, spit on that thing. Yeah, you got to hawk to her and spit on that thing. But now she's saving puppies. I know. I know. And, I mean, this could be the new chimp crazy, you know? <laughs> it could be hawk to a haven. You know, so she actually started her animal foundation uh, after she got her acclaim, her internet fame uh, called Paws Across America. She says, ever since my life changed so publicly, I realized there had been a reason for it. Growing up, the one constant in my uh, life was my pets and they helped me get through so much by starting Paws Across America. My newfound financial blessings will be shared with the animals that need it most. So the first place I went was my hometown in Tennessee. Now get over there and adopt some doggies. Um, she's also excited. Uh, she's She launched a fund, the Paws Across America Fund, and their mission is to bring awareness, advocacy, and financial assistance to animal charities within the United States. The Tennessee native went to Petco in the clip to pick up supplies, including leashes, collars, and dog food, and brought them to Lewisburg Animal Shelter. And some breaking news as of today. Go on. Is she announced her podcast. Yes. Called Talk Tua. Yeah. So... Yeah, we um, we knew Look we knew that, that was coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah, where she's excited to have real conversations mm. with these people that she's meeting because of her fame. Yes, talk to her. Talk to her. <sighs> this is where we're at, guys. <laughs> talk to her. Yeah. Talk to her. Talk on that pod. <laughs> <laughs> so from one uh, viral sensation to another, this influencer we've talked about at the past couple of weeks named Jules LeBron, we are obsessed with, uh, is a, a trans woman who started the viral trend of demure, mindful, very mannerly, very cutesy, uh, who kind of went through a bit of a rough time with someone buying the trademark, I think as of like last week or the week before. And now we have some good news because the trademark controversy is getting handled. And when the trademark controversy gets handled, it's very mindful, very demure. We like that. It's cutesy. So this went everywhere, um, all over the internet. And the expression was popularized by Jules LeBron, according to legal documents obtained by NBC News. Bates filed a request in Washington in an attempt to trademark the expression. So this guy named Jefferson Bates was like, you know what? I'm going to trademark this. And now they are negotiating, I guess. Um let's see, at the end of August, LeBron posted an update on TikTok about the trademark, saying, it's getting handled. Uh Divas on the trademark front, I feel like I have something to say. LeBron began, we got it handled. Now I'm going to leave it at that. We got it handled. Mama got a team now. So she got some support. Some she got some support. So support. she thanked people for their support and tagging and mentioning her amid the trademark filing. She concluded her video by saying, keep an eye out. So we're very, very excited because obviously all of the funds raised for her is helping her on her journey. Uh, to transition, to be her authentic self. And I think that's just so amazing. And that's one of my favorite things about the internet. It's like one day you're nobody, the next day you're like, oh my God, I can do things I want, whether start an animal foundation or, you know, be your best self and live your life authentically. Sure, why not? So a this is a story that I am just obsessed with. She is my... OG hot girl summer. Okay, this, I don't know if you guys have heard this story. This woman has intentionally set two wildfires, intentionally committed arson because she enjoyed watching the firefighters and hoped to flirt with them. Yep, if you want... 
<laughs> Where there's smoke shows, there's fire. <laughs> so this woman set fires to flirt with firefighters who would rush to the scene to extinguish the blaze. And where is this? In Greece. Oh, bitch, set a fire in Greece. Go for it. Woman had been sentenced after she set two wildfires in Greece for a very unusual reason. She said she set two separate blazes so that she could speak to the firefighters who came to tackle the fires. Reports have said that the woman had attempted to set multiple fires, resulting in two wildfires breaking out due to her actions. Now, I am not saying go and set fires, but... The L.A. Fire Department's pretty hot. As many times as they've been here at the comedy store, due to someone passing out or acting up, they're hot. They are tattooed. They have, like, vintage mustaches. Their hair is, like, gelled. Their shirts... I will tell you this. I don't know if Francisco Ramos and I discussed this on the podcast. I can't remember. They were here. Fire truck pulls up. I don't think so. No. No. And I, Francisco and I are standing outside, and these guys, like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, just massive, shirts rolled up, just like <laughs> suspenders, greased hair, mustache, tats, walked by, and like a wind hit us, and we were just like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. And Francisco, who is straight and is married to a woman, was like, oh, my God. God. And I'm like, I know what's happening. And I thought it would be a really funny idea if I just pretended to pass out, but then I don't want to be that person. <laughs> because then I'm this woman in Greece. Just yeah. like, oh, I need help. You know. Um, <laughs> like the Sandlot? Yes. Wendy Peppercorn? Wendy Peppercorn. That needs, I got peppercorned. That's, that's, <laughs> we're going to coin the phrase, you got peppercorned. When you, when, when someone passes out just because they think you're cute, you got peppercorned. Um, so she was arrested, uh, and here's the statement. It says, a Greek citizen who is responsible for causing two fires on farmland intentionally and repeatedly on August 24th and 25th, um, in the area of Karatsitsa and the municipality of Tripoli in Arcadia. Um, she said it was because of the firefighters. She says, you know what? They're hot. I want to look at some dudes. Go for it. You know? You, this is why this is why we need a peckers. A what? Peckers. What is that? <sighs> I'm pitching. Hello, sharks. My idea. <laughs> peckers is the female version of Hooters. Okay. But it's woodpeckers. Okay. And the beak is the dong where the eyes are the owl's eyes. Yeah, but I'm boobs. seeing it now. I'm seeing the whole so thing. So peckers. Now. Yep. For women, yep. so women can go in and look at some tallywaggers and eat buffalo wings. Yep, onion rings. Whatever. Yep. Because when if they don't have spaces where they can go be horny ladies, they're, they're setting be fires. <laughs> you shouldn't have to set a fire to cruise for some deck. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm picking it up, yeah. You know, yeah, like I, I, I see. It's not very mindful. <laughs> it's not very demure. <laughs> you can't just start a fire to look at hot people. Um, am I mad at her? Yes and no. <laughs> I feel like like good for her, but also get on a dating app. You don't need to set fire <laughs> to. This. to <laughs> To the, to the country of Greece. Um, but yeah, it was... It, some of these even came close to the outskirts of the actual capital of Athens. And they said, it felt like hell. We don't have the resources to beat these conditions. Thousands of people had to be evacuated as the blaze tore through forest, farmland, and homes with the cause of the blaze currently under investigations. Well, um, it was this woman, shocker, who was looking at looking at the boys. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That's insane. Who would so, have thought that? Because they were crazy wildfires yeah. in Greece, and they were it was like a big news story. It was a problem. And horny ladies. Here's how we're going to save the town. <laughs> These firefighters are going to release a calendar to raise money for 
the rehabilitation of this farmland, forest land, and we're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to find out who these Grecian firefighters are. Oh, my God. I can't even say Grecian firefighter without like... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, but they will... We'll, we'll find... We'll find a way. We'll find a way. The, the earth will heal. So we're going to set fire to the plains to set fire to the rain with Adele announcing a lengthy hiatus for music after her Las Vegas residency ends. She was three years on the road, which I... That went by so fast. Because I remember when she first started her residency, there was that, like, confetti that fell down and she just, like, disappeared on stage. Did you ever see that? I don't know if I did. She was like, good night, everyone. Fuck off. <laughs> it's, you know, Adele talk. And then, like, all this confetti came down and then she's just gone. So, like, she fell really quick down, the like, a hole and, like, the confetti settled and she was gone. It was really kind of cool. Um, so Adele has officially said hello to goodbye. Adele is taking a lengthy break. The 36-year-old shared her decision on stage at her concert in Munich, Germany, telling the crowd that once she's done with her Las Vegas residency shows, she plans to step away from the stage. I really enjoy performing, I do. The Easy On Me singer said in a moment captured on TikTok, it's been three <laughs> fucking years now. Which is the longest fucking I've ever done, fuck for fuck's sake, and probably the longest fucking I'll ever do. Note that she's got 10 shows left in her Vegas residency after missing several due to illness. The 15-time Grammy winner continued, but after that, for fuck's sake, I'll not see any of you lots for an incredibly long time, I won't. And I'll hold you dear my heart for that length, the whole length of my fucking break. <laughs> Expressing her gratitude, Adele added that she will fantasize, oh, about her time on stage amid her hiatus, saying, I just need a fucking rest, I do. <laughs> As for what she plans to do during her time off, the emotional British singer said, I spent the last seven fucking years building a new life for myself, cleaning chimneys, and I want to live it now. I want to live my life that I've been building, and I will miss you terribly, along with bangers and mash. Some of the life Adele referenced uh, likely has to do with her fiancé, Rich Paul, that uh, she has confirmed that she and the agent, who uh, he's a sports agent, went public with the romance, are in fact engaged. Adele has an 11-year-old son with her ex-husband. She confirmed the engagement news during another Munich concert. So this is just Adele saying, I just want more kids. I want to spend time with my family. Um, and I say... Get it, girl. You're rich. You got the Grammys. You did the residency. Take as much time as you need to enjoy your life. Go do it. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know who also needs to take some notes from Adele? Jennifer Lopez. Oh, poor J-Lo. Jennifer Lopez had, I think, the hardest summer <laughs> Of anybody. Her movie bombed, her album bombed, her tour got canceled. The Bodega Order, the greatest love story ever told, received terrible reviews, with the worst coming from Ben Affleck by finally saying, Bitch, I gotta go. You're crazy. Um, she, we all know, announced her divorce from Ben Affleck in typical J Lo fashion and form by saying, I'm done on the day of their two-year anniversary. Isn't that nice? Um, she also shared a thirst trap over the weekend where you're getting a picture of her famous booty in the mirror, and she is wearing a shirt that says, Unbothered. And I'm like, honey, just, just stop. Just stop. Petty. Petty, petty, petty. Um, so she has... If you watch This Is Me Now, uh, whew, you know what I'm talking about. It's insane. The album was awful. She also went on, I feel like, The Tonight Show or something where she had, I want to say, eight to ten versions of the record art. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So, like, the album cover, she had done, like, a different picture for each album. So there was like eight to 10 versions of this album. I mean, narcissism at its finest. Um, 
I've never, like, I, I'm a Ben Affleck fan. I mean, I re- never say that really. But, like, I'm kind of glad Ben Affleck <laughs> kind of got out. <laughs> it's like he got out of the sunken place, you know? Um, and she said on, uh, at the end of August on social media, because she did go a little quiet from the split after after it all went down, she shared pics with the caption of, oh, it was a summer. So I, yeah, I can't even, I don't pay attention to this at all. I wish I, I did. You know, and this is a pop culture podcast and this isn't me, you know, anything I'm saying is just my opinion. It's very to be taken in fun. But, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm I'm sitting here going, oh my God, it's another week. Here we go with the same <laughs> shit. I'm like, can we just have a week off without a Jennifer Lopez storyline? Like, I will take... No, I was going to say JoJo Siwa and I changed my mind. <laughs> I mean, but like anything, you know, I feel like it's okay. You're in, you're, you're going through a divorce. You had, yes, oh, it was a summer. Your, your movie tanked, your, um, uh, your documentary about the movie tanked. The tour was canceled. And she, like, and she got dragged like hard online for all of these things. Every single time something yeah, happened. It's like, maybe just. Put your phone down. Like, go, go, go take a hiatus. Yeah. But it brings it all back because she did file for divorce from Ben Affleck on their second year anniversary, which also happened to be Virgo season. Now, I've mentioned this a couple times uh, over the past couple years I've been doing this. That one of my favorite moments was when we had Heather Morris from Glee come on the podcast. She had a background in dancing. She's an amazing dancer, fantastic dancer. She was actually on tour with Beyonce before Glee and had her on the podcast. And during Virgo season, uh, let's see, when was this? Do we even know what year this was? I mean, this was... I No. The short was posted a year ago. The short was posted a year ago, but I want to say it was like two, three years ago because that's the old studio. Um, yeah. Heather Morris gets on and tells us the story about Jennifer Lopez coming into an audition, asking everybody in the room if they're Virgos, and I'll just let the clip take it from there. It went crazy viral and uh, actually got us written up in some... Some articles, which was kind of exciting. So this was a ver- very viral moment, and look how it's come full circle. It's Virgo season. It's Let's, Virgo yeah. season. Let's divulge. Yeah, Jennifer Lopez held an audition for dancers for one of her tours. Most of the time, a dance audition, you're not getting paid. You've been there since 10 a.m., and you're auditioning until 6 p.m. Well, it's like stand-up. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you're not getting paid. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. You don't get any money. Um, I love working for free. <laughs> yes. People judging you the whole time. <laughs> Mm-hmm. She walks in the room and she said, um, thank you so much. You guys have worked so hard. Um, by a show of hands, um, if there are any Virgos in the room, can you just raise your hand? So a bunch of Virgos raise their hand. And she, she shot them on sight. Shot them on sight. <laughs> <laughs> Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> what did she do? Did they have to she leave? She whispered to her assistant. No. She looked at them and she said, thank you so much for coming. Get out of here. Oh, my God. <laughs> And they had to leave after a full day of auditioning for Jennifer Lopez. This is true. This is hearsay. Isn't that crazy? First of all, I'd like to say I'm so glad our clips are way better than they were <laughs> back then. My God. I remember this. I heard about this. Yeah. I, I wasn't here working or anything, and I, I remember hearing about how uh, Jennifer Lopez won't won't work with Virgos. Isn't that crazy? So here we are in Virgo season, and this woman has just been smacked around with the karma, a Virgo karma. Um, but also, I would like to note some famous Virgos that probably are not liked by Jennifer Lopez. Here is a list of famous Virgos who J-Lo hates. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Zendaya, which I totally could see because I could just feel the ooze of jealousy from Zendaya. Like Jennifer Lopez, just looking at Zendaya, J-Lo just wants to go up and just grab her by the face and just 
hocus pocus her ass, just, <laughs> you know. Sucker, um, suck her life force out. Exactly. And I'm sorry, Zendaya is the hottest thing. <clears throat> I, she is the one, I will say, one of the very few celebrities that I, of young celebrities that I am just obsessed with everything they do. Love her. Jenna Ortega is definitely getting up there with me. I'll have to wait for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, but Jenna Ortega is the same thing. I love, I love these just like it girls right now. I like Jenna Ortega a lot. She's I, cool. I watched, I watched Wednesday a few times. Actually. Yeah. yeah. Really, really fun. Really fun. I love that. She's just very professional, just appreciates working. She's not like controversial in public and you know, she's just does the work, shows up, looks great. Love it. Keanu Reeves. He's Virgo, September 2nd. Jennifer Lopez hates you. She hates The Matrix. She hates the whole trilogy. <laughs> uh, Pink, September 8th. Pink, word of advice, check your trapeze strings because J-Lo will cut them. So just want to make sure you're okay, Pink. Nick Jonas, September 16th. Um, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really... No, 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 no. Hold on. Let me go back. You got on? Yeah. Nick Jonas, September 16th. JLo doesn't like you. Why? Because she's jealous. Yep, that's why. Uh, Beyonce, September 4th. Because you're Beyonce. <laughs> JLo does not like you because you're Beyonce. Um, Salma Hayek, September 2nd. JLo does not like you um, because. Uh, why does. J-Lo not like Salma Hayek. She's better at being J-Lo than J-Lo. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> I think, yes, I think Salma Hayek, I think J-Lo does not like Salma Hayek because Salma Hayek is better at being J-Lo. I think so. She's That's, a better J-Lo. Yeah. Salma Hayek makes a better J-Lo and Salma Hayek would make a better Selena. There, I said it. <laughs> um, John Mulaney, he's a Virgo. I'm going to have to say John Mulaney needs to run because I feel like J-Lo can feel and sense the twinkling of another engagement ring and she, she's going to be after him. He's like nerd hot. He's definitely got some like young Ben Affleck features I could see. So, yeah. yeah. I, I, I think he looks like her type. Yeah. Shania Twain, uh, another Virgo queen. J-Lo hates you, Shania Twain. She knows whose bed your boots have been under. Um, and I heard J-Lo hates Virgos and Canadians. So there's that. Uh, BB Rexa, J-Lo, enough. BB Rexa, August 30th. Leave BB Rexa alone. I think BB Rexa needs to have a uh, camera on her at all times because JLo will be throwing her phone at her face. <laughs> and finally, Blake Lively, August 25th. JLo hates Blake Lively um, because <laughs> everyone else does. <laughs> yeah. Join the club, JLo. Join the club. You, yeah, you, she's a follower. <laughs> so, yes, those are some famous Virgos that JLo hates. So, if you're a Virgo and JLo hates you, just drop a comment in uh, the comment section below. Yeah, let us know why JLo. Let us know you. why JLo hates you. <laughs> <laughs> Today on why does JLo hate you? <laughs> um, here's we got a couple more stories um, that I'm really excited about. Fall is the season of sequels officially, and the first installment of the long anticipated Wicked movie. So here are some fun movies that I am really, really, really excited about. Coming out this fall season, we've got some spook, we've got some sequels, a little bit of camp as well. Um, first of all, September 6th, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice comes out. We've been talking about Jenna Ortega. I cannot wait. I have questions. I'm not going to get, I mean, I'm sure everyone's seen Beetlejuice by now, right? The Absolutely. first one. My biggest question going into this movie is, where are the Maitlands? Where's Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin? Yeah. I want to know where they're at. Are they? Are we getting a cameo of them? Because I loved them so much in the first film, and now they're just like not there. Like the dad's not there, obviously, because he passed away and he was like a creepy pedophile. Mm -hmm. But like the um, 
I need to know. Are they just in Beetlejuice land now? Yeah, or I, are they, I'm thinking yeah, they're going to do that. Yeah. They're like, oh, they're on vacation in Sandworm land or whatever. Yeah. Um, Speak No Evil, that's September 30th. I'm sorry, September 13th. Speak No Evil, that is that is the, um, what's his name? Uh, James McElvoy, which, have you seen the trailer for this? I haven't, but okay. I'm, I'm definitely interested in it yes. now. I so it's him. like this family goes to like, a foreign land or whatever. I, I want to say it's like, you know, Italy. Some some like really nice place. And they it looks like they stay with this family like at an Airbnb, and the host family becomes like really attached to the other family, and like they start like you know, the wife's like taking a shower and he's like staring at her, Oof. and like one of the kids is mute and like doesn't have a tongue or something like that. He does the best creepy guy. Yes, he does. He yeah. really does. Yeah. So um, that's not a sequel, but it made the list. Yeah, it's not a sequel, but it's great. I'm here for it. Joker 2 with Lady Gaga, October 4th. Uh, so stoked. This trailer looks so awesome. It's going to give us like some cinematic magic. I'm here for it. Like musical numbers. There's going to be... I know. I love Batman. I don't love musicals. I'm, I'm, I'll see. I'm definitely going to watch it, though. You're not? Oh, no, I will. 100%. Oh, yeah, you will. Oh, yeah, I'll go. Joaquin won the Oscar for it. I know. I love Batman. I love the whole thing. Uh, I The musical thing is a little nerve-wracking. But... but also, this is Lady Gaga's, like, give me a goddamn Oscar. Yeah. She didn't get it for uh, Shallow. Or no, she or did she get an Oscar for Shallow? She got an Oscar. She hasn't gotten an acting. She wants to be, you know, this is the, the acting. Yeah, not just music. She wants the acting Oscar. Yeah. Uh, Smile 2, October 18th. Loved Smile 1. <laughs> Smile is a great, great horror film. I watched it on a plane. I didn't really care for the first one. Smile 2 looks absolutely fun. It follows a pop star, like, you know, going on a tour. And, like, it, I, I'm really intrigued to see how this goes. And then the, the Smile monster is following around. The first installment of the Wicked movie comes out November 22nd. Of course, everyone's going to be in line for this one. I will be seeing this as well. Hopefully, I'll have some Wicked Redemption. Um, Cynthia Revo, Ariana Grande. Um, who else is in this? Uh, Jonathan Bailey, Bowen Yang. We have Jeff Goldblum, Michelle Yeoh. Like, it is a full star-studded cast. Peter Dinklage, for God's sakes. Um, it's going to be very, very fun. So, definitely... Everyone's going to be in line for that one. We also have Gladiator 2. Uh, Pedro Pascal is in this one. Um, I, I I think it's going to be great. I just think it's kind of funny because I feel like they made this movie because they were like, hey, did you know that the Coliseum was flooded for uh, boat uh, fights? And I think they were like, let's do it. Yeah, Gladiator 2, I smell it. Gladiator 2 on water. So uh, it's 20, literally 24 be years later. The first Gladiator came out in 20, 2000. Yeah, 24 years later, a sequel. So we'll see what it's all about. I'm sure it'll be... It's it's the same... It's uh, What's his name? Scott. Uh, Ridley Scott? Is it? I think so. Pretty sure. Okay. I'm sure it'll be epic. And then finally, we have Moana 2, November 27th. I'm just... I can't. I, oh, I hope it's good. As someone going to Hawaii? I cannot wait. Moana is one of my favorite. Uh, Disney films, and I, I'm very excited to see where it goes. Um, we also have some new music coming out. We have Paris Hilton. She is releasing the Infinite Icon album. It drops 9-6-24. Katy Perry, 1-4-3, I love you, 9-20-24. Coldplay, Moon Music on October 4th. Sean Mendes is dropping, wait for it, Sean. On October 18th. Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg have new music called Missionary November. Um, and also, we got today info that Lady Gaga will be dropping her new single in October. Uh, the date is not yet announced, but it will be from her new album, LG7, the seventh album, Lady Gaga 7, uh, sometime in October. So get ready. It is going to be a fun, fun fall indeed. And guys, with that, I hope you guys had a fantastic... Uh, Listen today. I, 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 this was fun. Yeah, I had a good time. No guests, but I just felt it was intimate, cozy, getting ready for fall. Yeah, wrap up the summer. Wrap up the summer. Let's get it in full throttle, full throttle fall. Um, so, <laughs> as always, Lee, thank you for 
chiming in and helping out as always. We will see you next time on the Just Saying Podcast. Make sure to rate and review. Share the clips if you love them. It just, it really helps our engagement. And we just really, really thank you guys for listening and supporting us. So we will see you guys next time on the Just Saying Podcast. Have a great, fantastic week. Bye. Mm-hmm.